Satan's darts at me out for faith has caught a joyful sound the song of saints on high ground so tomorrow to be better than my today I want the way that I relate with God the way that I communicate interact with him to be on another level I want this to be your prayer as well that even if some way somehow you strayed you've trespassed you've gone contrary to God's words there's still a higher ground for you to go to. Be encouraged to do more for God than you did yesterday. Amen. Just to know that 
Good morning, my brothers and my sisters. Oh, for grace to trust him more. The songwriter reminds us through the hymn, I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day. Still praying as I onward bound. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. And as we continue to ask God to plant our feet on higher ground, another songwriter declared that, oh, for grace to trust him more. I am, I've learned to trust Jesus. I've learned to trust in him. Hallelujah. As we go higher, as we seek God, we learn to trust in him. And so this morning, as we go into worship, let us like David declare in Psalms 150. He said, praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty firmament. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the lute and harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with the stringed instruments and flutes. Praise him with loud cymbals. Praise him with clashing cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise he the Lord. And let us lift our voices and praise God in our house, in our car, in our workplaces, wherever we are. If we could just offer a, a, a word of praise, an offering of praise to God this morning, just go ahead and offer an offering of praise. Let everything that has bread praise he the Lord. God, we praise you this morning. God, we adore you. We magnify your name. We love you this morning. We exalt you this morning. Hallelujah. Father, we adore you, oh God. You are magnified. You are high and exalted this morning. God, you are welcome in the sanctuary. You are welcome on the Zoom. You're welcome in this worship service. We offer sacrifices of praise and hearts of thanksgiving with our mouth filled with praise. God, we will praise you. We will praise you in the good times. We'll praise you in the bad times times. We'll praise you, God, even when we don't feel like praising you, God. We will still command our lips, our bodies, our mouth, our heart, our minds to give you praise, for you deserve it. Hallelujah. So we praise you in psalms and, and scriptures and songs this morning. God, we praise you. And so we are going to have our opening selection by Brother Jeremiah, after which Brother Brian Muzabazi will lead us to the throne of grace this morning. <laughs> Oh, my. 
my life. Thank you, Jesus. I lift, I lift my hands in total praise to you. Oh, thank you, Lord, for all the blessings. Mm -hmm. I thank you, Lord, omnipotent King, King of Kings, Lord of Lords. I give you all the glory. I give you all the praise. Thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Oh, amen. Brother. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let us all bow our heads and close our eyes. Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning, O oh God. We come before your holy presence, O oh Heavenly Father, seeking forgiveness for our sins, O oh Heavenly Father. And even as we come before you now, O oh God, we thank you, Lord, for this moment that you have given us to fellowship, you know, as brethren, O oh Heavenly Father. We come before you even now, O Heavenly Father, seeking, O God, that as we fellowship like this, O God, your Holy Spirit would guide the proceedings, O Heavenly Father, would be within the service, O God, that you would enlighten us, O Heavenly Father, on what you want us to do with our lives, O Heavenly Father, to your glory, O Heavenly Father, that we may make the world known, O Heavenly Father. Avail yourself to us, O Heavenly Father. Open up our heart to be able to understand what it is that you require from us, O God. And even now, God, we pray, oh God, that you would just, you know, open up the doors, open up the windows of heaven, oh Heavenly Father. We pray, oh Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you, Brother Brian. Mm. And this time we're going to ask um, Brother Chris to do the welcome. Good morning, church. It's my privilege this morning to welcome our faithful members, but also our visitors. So if this is your first or second Sunday with us, we are so grateful that you have come to be with us this morning. And it is our hope that you experience the love of Christ this morning and his presence during our worship. Should you wish to reach out to us uh, after service, uh, we would just uh, <clears throat> encourage you to reach out via email or telephone, and we would be happy to uh, get back to you. Welcome and enjoy the service. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Chris. Sister Catherine Hunt will do, will receive our offering. A sincere thanks to all those who continue to faithfully give your tithes and offering. As without giving, it is difficult to accomplish anything. Your generosity is appreciated and it will help us to continue to do God's will. So give mm -hmm. as it is given to you Maybe. in Luke 6, 38. They will pour into your lap a good measure pressed down, shaken together, and running over. For by your standard of measure, it will be measured to you in return. Luke 6, 38. So there are three, actually there are four ways of giving to our church. Uh, you can give online. Um, there's the e-transfer and the email address is given at grant at gmail.com and that can be done through e-transfer. Uh, you can do so in person on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Uh, the office is open from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. and our address is 2029 Jared Street East, Toronto. And then there's the Tidely, Tidely website. You can give through that. And the 
the address is www at I'm sorry, www.grantame.com. Or you can send a check by mail. And our address again is 2029 Jared Street East, Toronto, Ontario, M4E 2K5, uh, 2B3. So let's bow our heads. Righteous and ever loving Father, Everything we have is a gift from you. As we bring our tithes and offering to you, we give back to you for the abundant blessings you have bestowed on us. Accept our tithes and offering and bless and multiply it and use it to accomplish your will. Bless those who gave and Lord, a special blessing to those who have who had the heart to give, as you only know the situation. We ask all these things in Jesus' name, I pray, amen. Amen, amen. Thank you, Sister Gaffney. Yeah.
of Jesus. Hallelujah. Come, let's magnify the Lord. At this time, we're going to have the reading of our scripture done by Sister Leila Thomas. Good morning, church family and visitors. I will be reading from New King's, King James Version. I'll be reading uh, Revelations chapter 2, verse 12 to 17. And to the angel of the church in Pergamos write, These things say, he who has the sharp two-edged sword, I know your works and where you dwell where Satan's throne is, and you hold fast to my name and did not deny my faith, even in the days in which Antipas was my faithful martyr, who was killed among you where Satan dwells. But I have a few things against you because you have there those who hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak to put a stumbling block before the children of Israel to eat things sacrificed to idols and to commit sexual immortality. Thus, you also have those who hold the doctrine of Nicolaitans, which, which things I hate. Repent or else I will come to you quickly and fight against you them with, so, with the sword of my mouth. And last verse, he who has an ear, let him hear what the spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give some of the hidden manna to eat, and I will give him a white stone. On the stone, a new name written, which has no, which no one knows except, except him who receives it. Thank you, Sister Leila, for reading the scripture this morning. As we prepare to hear the word of God, we're going to have a selection again from Brother Jeremiah, and then we'll have the sharing of the word. I've had many tears and sorrows I've had questions for tomorrow There have been times I didn't know right from wrong But in every situation God gave me Blessed consolation Now my trials came to only make me strong Through it all, oh, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God. Through it all, through it all, oh, I've learned to depend upon God's I thank God for the mountains. I thank God for the valleys. I thank him for the storms he brought me through. For if I never had a problem, I never knew that God could solve them. I never know what faith in God can do oh, 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 oh. through it all mm. through it all Lord I've learned to trust in Jesus I, I learned to trust in God oh, oh, oh. through it all through it all oh, I've learned Depend upon God's word through it all, through it all, oh Lord. I 
learned to trust in Jesus. I learned to trust in God. Yeah, oh, through it all. Through it all. Oh, I've learned to depend upon God's will. Oh, I've learned to depend on God's word I've learned to depend upon God's word oh thank you Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in him. I've learned to depend upon his word this morning. Father, we come to you at this moment. We come to you at this critical and crucial point in our service where God, we want to hear from you. But God, I just want to spend this time, God, just a few moments to give you praise. Just a few moments to adore your name this morning. Just to say thank you. Just to say thank you, God. God, that I can depend upon you. Thank you, God. That God, I can see you, God, in the midst of everything. Thank you, God, that you never fail, God. Thank you, God. That the hidden things, God, that we don't know about God, you have protected us from it this morning. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you for grace this morning. Oh, for grace to trust you more. Oh, for grace to call upon you more, God. If it had not been grace this morning, where would we be? So we thank you. We thank you, Father. We thank you that you afforded us this opportunity, Father, to go about our daily business, even when we don't even spend time to recognize you, God, in the beauty of your creation, in the beauty of who you are, Father. We say thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Oh, we thank you. Oh, we thank you for your many blessings. We thank you, God. Father, we bless your name this morning. We call you God. We call you King. We call you Savior. We call you Lord this morning. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus. Who can be compared to you, Heavenly Father? Who can stand in your presence? Who, mighty God, who is like unto you? Hallelujah. David declare that you are the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Holy, holy is your name, God, Lord God Almighty. The heavens declare your glory this morning. And we, your creation, God, praise you. We praise you, Father, as we come to hear your words this morning. 
We ask you to speak, God. We ask you to speak. God, we open our hearts to receive from you, Father. To receive what you have us to hear. And God, we do not consider ourselves this morning worthy of anything, mighty God. But only by your grace and your mercies, we are here today. So one more time, God, speak to us, your people, that none of us will leave here the same way we came on this service, but we would have been encouraged and strengthened feeling your love and your presence, oh God. If we're going through something this morning, Father, speak to every situation. Yes, Father, help us to forget about ourselves and forget about everything else and keep our eyes upon you as you speak to each and every one of us. We thank you. We praise you. We magnify your name this morning. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. This morning I want to share with you briefly from the passage of scripture that was read by Sister Leela this morning from Revelation 2 verse 12 to 17. And as we continue to look at the message sent to the churches by Jesus Christ, um, given to John, found in the first few chapters of Revelation. We have looked at the message that was sent to the church at Ephesus. We looked at the message that was sent to the church at, in Smyrna. And today we looked, we're gonna look at the message that was sent to the church in Pergamos. So I crave your attention, your indulgence for a few minutes as we see how best we can apply this scripture in a few minutes, that we can understand how the scripture is relevant to us today. Here in Revelation 2, we find the letter to the church in Pergamos, some Bible said Pergamum. Here we see Jesus describing himself as the one who has the sharp two-edged sword, something that is familiar to all of us. To the church in Smyrna, he described himself as the first and the last, the one who was dead and came to life. To the church in Ephesus, he described himself as the one who has the seven stars in his right hand and walk in the midst of the seven golden lampstands. We had already established that the golden lampstand represents the church, God's church. And the seven stars represent the leaders, the angel of the house, or the angel of the churches, as the scripture points out. The church in Pergamos was as a result of its status and this, it was as a result of what was happening in the church, it was described as the compromising church. Some Bibles, the heading has it as the compromising church. Jesus Christ having the sharp two-edged sword, which is the word of God, can be seen as an instrument of salvation, but also an instrument of death. What does that mean? As the one who has the, as the word of God, as an instrument of salvation, he promises us a message of salvation. He gave to us a message of salvation. And this message of salvation, it cut the, and loose us from the bondage and ch chains of sin and condemnation and free us from being condemned sinners. But it's also an instrument of death. For those of us who refuse the message of grace and salvation, for those of us who may reject the Lord Jesus Christ. So one of the things we can clearly say is that 
this message sees Jesus as the judge over all. Some say that it basically describes him as the executioner over all. So the message to the church in Pergamos was, in essence, the fact that if they fail to do as the one who walk in the midst of the golden lampstand, the church declares, then they will face serious judgment for them compromising the word of God and accepting sin in the body of Christ. Isaiah 42 verse eight, the Lord declares, he said, I am the Lord and that is my name and my glory I will not give to another, nor my praises to carved images. And so what Jesus message to the church in Pergamos was in essence can be likened to Isaiah 42 verse eight, reminding them that he is God and he will not give his glory to another and neither his praises to carve images. Scripture make it clear that God's glory cannot be taken from him, neither can it be shared. In the book of Isaiah 48, the Lord sent a word to Israel that they had invoked the God of Israel, but not in truth and righteousness. They claimed to rely on him, but he knew how stubborn they were. So he said further down in the chapter, he, so he refined them, he tested them in the furnace of affliction for his sake. And then he asked the question, he said, how can, my name be polluted. He will not give his glory to another. And he called Israel to hearken unto him. Here in Revelation 2 verse 12 to 17, we see Jesus Christ doing the same thing to the church in Pergamos, calling the church to hearken unto him because he will not give his glory to another. He will not be silent among his people. The church existed in Pergamos in the center of a society ridden with images of pagan gods and idols and temples. Temples that were used to offer sacrifices to other gods. Temples that were used to offer sacrifices to emperors and priests and nobles and officials. The church was described in the scripture as a throne for Satan. That in itself should give us an idea of the level of idolatry and evil that existed in Pergamos. For Jesus to describe it as Satan's throne, mean it was the center for worship of evil. And so Jesus, in the midst of that city, Jesus told the people, the believers, he said, I know your works. There were three things, or three groups of persons that were found in the church in Pergamos. He commended the people who remained faithful. Not only were they able to exist among a city that was evil and living in darkness. But then he described them, he said, I know your works. He identified those who were holding fast to his name. He said, these were the ones who refused to deny faith in Jesus Christ. Even though they had witnessed the death and martyrdom of Antipas, their great leader. He was martyred and killed for his steadfastness in proclaiming the word of God and casting out demons in Jesus' name. Jesus said, I know 
your works. I see you. Can you imagine the church in Pergamos existed where Satan's throne, throne dwell? It shows you the level of faith that is required to stand in such a city. These believers that Jesus was describing, they stood the test of time. They were not fearful believers, but rather believers that God seek today in his church. They held the banner high for Jesus in a society, a church, a city plagued with so many opportunities for stumbling. The very culture of the society in Pergamos was idolatry. It was built upon idolatry. And it had found its way in the church, as we will see, where Christ was to be the head and authority. But Jesus said, I see those who remain faithful to me. And this can be seen in their commitment not to be moved, not to be influenced, not to be deterred by anything, but to remain true to God and faithful to him. These are those who test the spirit against the word of God to know how and what to do. First Thessalonians 5 verse 21, Paul reminds us, he said, test everything and hold fast to what is good. These are the believers that God is looking for in such a time as this. Those who understand the mission of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Those who show their love for God in action. Those who are not caught between deciding to do right or do wrong, but live right instead of trying to decide to do right or wrong. Those who know the cost and was ready and willing to pay it, cost it what it may. They knew the sacrifice, the suffering for Christ, but they held fast to his name. And like Paul encourages us, so we are encouraged today to hold fast to the word of life. So that in the day of Christ, we may be proud that we did not run in vain or labor in vain. Oh, what a weeping and wailing it will be if we recognize that our running was in vain or our labor was in vain because we did not hold fast to the word of life. Oh, what weeping and wailing it will be if Christ does not find us faithful when he comes. My brothers and sisters, the message of Christ is one of love. And so that's why he encourages us to hold fast. That's why he encourages us to stand true to the faith that he has called us to. There was a group, a remnant in the church in Pergamos that were holding fast. There is a remnant in the body of Christ that is holding fast. And God commended them. And then the scripture tells us that Jesus Christ identified the other group. He said, then there are those in the church, as Jesus said, who hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak to put a stumbling block before the children of Israel, to eat things sacrificed to idols, and to commit sexual immorality. These were those that believed that they had the liberty to engage in a life with little regards to the word of God, yet believing that it would not affect their relationship with Jesus Christ and with the church. It is possible that they were influencing the believers to join them in their immorality and error of their ways. 
as Jesus said, putting a stumbling block before the children of Israel. It is possible that they were influencing others. They were dishonoring the Lord with the wages of unrighteousness. But we see in 2 Peter 2 verse 15, Peter warned the believers against the way of Balaam. Peter said that they forsake the right way and go astray following the way of Balaam who loved the wages of unrighteousness, but was rebuked for his iniquity. You see, in the church of Pergamos, the doctrine of Balaam had infiltrated the church, where believers were persuaded and encouraged to compromise their standards. One may wonder, how do we compromise? our standards today? And that's a good question. Do we encourage others to do wrong? Do we do wrong and encourage others and give reasons such as God understand why we do wrong? Do we justify compromising our standards? The scripture causes, calls us to examine our lives, examine our relationship with God. That's what we ought to do. You see, the reality is that the doctrine of Balaam was nothing good. It was a doctrine that speaks to unrighteousness. And if you look at Numbers 23, without going so much in detail, the Bible tells us that Balaam was known as a prophet of Almight of God. But he was a prophet who was tempted to utter false prophecies for hire, for his benefit. And so he was known for that. And Balak hired him to put a curse on the Israelites for a fee. But God intervened. And the Bible tells us in short that every time Balaam went to put a curse, the Lord would speak a word of blessing on the children of Israel. And Balak kept getting angry because Balaam would not do what he wanted him to do. Until Balaam had to say to him in short terms, how can I curse that which God has blessed? My brothers and sisters, the doctrine of Balaam sometimes infiltrate, or, or it has infiltrated the church in Pergamos. It's up to us to decide. Will we choose to be faithful? Or will we choose to follow the teachings of Balaam? Not only was there those who hold the faith, but there were those who followed the teaching of Balaam. And then the Lord said, there are those who follow the doctrine. What does that mean? my brothers and sisters that there were those who dealt strongly in condemning the word of God there were those who practiced immorality there were those who wished for God's people and the church of God to be destroyed. Imagine the church in Pergamos having been divided as such. Imagine the church in Pergamos having been divided. In today's society, 
in any organization, in any structure, whether it be school, in any society, whether it be government, there are issues of division for different reasons. But how can we understand what God is saying? The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians 2 that Paul addresses the issue of division in the church of God. And even if he doesn't represent what was happening in the church in Pergamos, it was important to be addressed. That the issues of division is caused by immaturity in faith. The issues of division is caused by immaturity in the word of God. Faith is essential when facing ungodly compromising lifestyle. Faith is essential when we are faced with making choices. We are encouraged today to live a life as an overcomer. As a church, a light on a hill that shines bright in a spiritual world of darkness. Jesus calls us like he calls the church in Pergamos to repent. Repent of compromising the gospel. Repent of compromising our standards. Repent of turning away from God. He said, or else, he as a two-edged sword will fight against those who have turned away and compromised. My brothers and sisters, it's a message of love for you and for me. We spoke last week and we said repentance is not bad. It's a good thing because it's grace. It's grace that we all need. Jesus calls us to repent. Evil is all around us. The devil comes to destroy. And in its attempt to destroy, it will find ways to infiltrate our very soul if it must. Because the aim is to destroy. The aim is to destroy. But let us live a life of faith. Let us repent. Let us avoid living a compromised lifestyle. Let us remain faithful regardless of the compromising lifestyle that we may see around us. The truth about the scripture is that Jesus was not referring to unbelievers in his messages, but he was speaking to the church. He was speaking to the body of Christ. It means that he saw it in the body of Christ. And then the question we are to ask ourselves, or the question that ponders my mind is, the Lord described the faithful who would not deny Jesus. But the question is, how did it, the doctrine of Balaam and the doctrine of the Nicolaitans ended up in the church in Pergamos? I'll take you to a parable in Matthew 13. The parable of the wheat and the tears. The Bible says, as Jesus told it, a farmer planted good seeds in, its, in his field. But at night, as the workers slept, the enemy came and planted weeds among the wheat. The question we ask ourselves is, have we been sleeping? Have we been sleeping? How is it that the church in Pergamos, having been described as those who did not deny the faith, how did the doctrine of Balaam and the doctrine of the Nicolaitans find its way in the church in Pergamos? 
The scripture doesn't say. But have we been sleeping? Have we let down our guard? Have we been fearful and not hold to the faith? The Bible tells us in the very parable that as the men walk, as they got up, and they saw the dangers of the weeds, of the tears among the weeds, that one of them asked the master, do we need to pluck up the tears? And he said, no. Because in doing that, you may destroy the weeds. But let them both grow together until the day of harvest. My point to us this morning, my brothers and sisters, is that it is our responsibility to examine ourselves. Are we a weed? Are we a weed? Are we weed? Are we weed? That's the only question we should be asking. Because on that day of harvest, the Lord will sift. The Lord will pick harvest's weeds from among the weeds. Our word of encouragement today is do not allow the weeds to choke us to death. Do not allow the weeds to destroy the seeds that God has planted in your life. Understand that the weed compromise the ground in which the weed, the weed is sown. But the sower is in control of the soil. My brothers and sisters, I encourage us this morning, like the church in Pergamos, it is interesting that the things we see that Jesus spoke about, we can identify with it today. But it calls us to ask ourselves individually, Am I compromising my faith and relationship with God? In what ways have I done that? Jesus said, repent. Repent. Let us turn from the ways that do not please God because he's coming back. He's coming back for his church. He's coming back for his bride. If Jesus should come now, are we ready? And so I close this morning by asking us to bow our heads in prayer, in your own space, in your own time. Let us examine our lives. Let us examine our relationship with God. The church in Pergamos, three groups found in the church, those who hold fast to the faith, those who follow the practice of Balaam that led to the wages of unrighteousness, those who follow the practice of the Nicolaitans that also led to idolatry and immorality. Not only that, but the influence that it had on the church in Pergamos. 
that Jesus called them to repent. It doesn't always change the environment in which the church exists, but he calls us to live for him in the environment. My brothers and sisters, we may not be faced with pagan worship and pagan temples. We may not be faced with those situations as the church or the believers in Pergamos were faced with. But what is it that has become a stumbling block in our relationship with God? What is it that has hindered us and become a, 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 an hindrance in our life with God? What is it, if there's any? We are called this morning to repent. So right where you are, in your own time, in your own way, why not whisper a prayer to God this morning? Why not whisper a prayer? Each and every one of us for ourselves. Do not compromise your faith. I don't care what it is. I don't care how good it looks. It doesn't matter how much it promises to be all that you ever dream of. If it requires you to compromise your faith and your standard, it's not of God. Do not compromise this morning. Do not hold fast to God. God wants somebody to know, do not compromise. Try the spirits. Test it against the word of God and what the word of God says. Try the spirits. Father, we want to thank you for love, for mercies. We thank you, God, that you are who you are. We may not have words to describe who you are to us. Some call you Lord. Some call you Savior. Some call you Father. God, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, Wonderful Counselor, Everlasting God, the Mighty God, the anointed one, the Messiah. We call you so many names because of who you represent in our lives. We call you provider. We call you El Shaddai God, Jesus. Our rock, our bomb, our fortress, our refuge, our all in all. This morning, we come to you individually, mighty God of Daniel. We ask you, O oh God, that you will take our hearts. God, we present everything to you, Father. You know our hearts before you. Our concern is not what the other person is doing, but what you require of us to do. So God, this morning, we examine our lives before you. Remove the walls and the barriers that may have been set up that prevents us from seeing ourselves. We examine God. Because God, we want when you look at us, when you see us, when you see what we do and how we do, God, you find us faithful and true to the end. You can describe us, God, as the ones who hold fast to the hope in Christ Jesus. 
y estado. We desire to be like God. We desire to live for you. We desire to trust you this morning. We desire to walk in righteousness and uprightness in you, Jesus. We desire that. So Father, take our hearts this morning. Remove anything that is unlike you. Father, we pray for our church this morning. God, that even as you search in your body, you search our lives, you search our hearts, God. That God, that you will bring us to a place of repentance. Bring us to a place collectively to repent. Mm. Repent, God, of the things that we have done and said. Repent, God, of the things that we have allowed to infiltrate our church, God. Your church, not ours, but yours, God. For the times when we did not put you head and authority over the things that we did, God. We repent. For the times, God, when we became caught up in the culture of society rather than standing on your words, even if it meant death, we repent. God, this morning, we ask your God to breathe in the life of your church. We ask you to breathe in the membership of your church. We ask you to breathe, God, in every avenue of your church. God, as we open our eyes and our ears and our hearts and our minds to grow, in faith, to grow in your word, to grow in your knowledge and understanding of who you are. Mm. Thank you for grace. Thank you for mercies. Thank you, God. Thank you. Oh, Jesus, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you for anyone that is listening at this time who may not have accepted you as Lord and Savior. We pray, God, that you will reach their heart right now. Speak a word of salvation and hope in their lives. That they will come to accept you as Lord and Savior. They will come to recognize, God, that they need you, God. We speak, God, to every individual who may be struggling with something this morning. Difficulty, hardships, financial, emotional, psychological, whatever the situation is. God, we just ask you to breathe your breath of life. Breathe your breath of transformation. Breathe your breath of change into these situations. Breathe peace and comfort. Breathe love, God, and hope in every situation before you right now. The things that we can't verbalize, God, but our hearts are crying out. Breathe, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, our great comforter, breathe and comfort us, your people. Father, we just want to say thanks. Thank you, God, for your love. Thank you, God, 
for your blessings. Thank you, God, for giving us what we need, God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we thank you this moment. We thank you, King of Kings and Lord of Lords, that you, God, saw it fit to remind us in love not to be compromising of our faith. Like the church in Pergamos was found compromising the word of God, their standards. We thank you, Jesus, for an opportunity to come and repent. Thank you, Jesus. And we give you all the praise and all the glory and all the honor that is due to your name. We give it all to you this morning. All of it, Jesus. And we say thank you. Mm. Thank you, sweet Holy Spirit. Thank you. In your name I pray. Amen. And amen. Bless God. Bless God. Bless God. Hallelujah. We thank you. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you. We thank you. this time we're going to have our sorry
our announcements read by Sister Patience. Good afternoon, church. Here are your announcements for this week. Okay. Uh, Christian Education Congress. You were invited to the fourth district for the Christian Education One Day Virtual Inspire Experience next Saturday, September 25th from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Eastern time. If you have not yet registered, please do so. Registration is free. The registration link is in the announcement emails. There will be specific sessions for youths of all ages. So we encourage you to register the kids to participate in these sessions. A church reopening. We will be reopening church for in-person worship on Sunday, October the 3rd, 2021 at 11 a.m. We will be having a hybrid worship service, which is both virtual and in-person. We're looking forward to worshiping together again. We will send out a registration link for service and any other details closer to the date of reopening. church reopening preparation. In preparation for the church reopening, there will be prayers in the sanctuaries on Mondays. So tomorrow, the 20th, as well as the following Monday, September 27th, from 4 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. Everyone is invited. Our youth Sunday school. Our virtual youth Sunday school is conducted every Sunday at 2.30 p.m. Our youth continue to grow in their talent, skills, gifts, and spiritual relationship with God. All youths are invited to join in this interactive Zoom Sunday class with breakout rooms for the different age groups. Members are encouraged to check their emails for Sunday school material and updates. Our midweek Bible study. You are all invited to join our fun, engaging and interactive Bible study time on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. There will be interesting topics, interactive sessions and great facilitators. Our topic is when we, our current theme is when we pray like Jesus. A prayer hour service. Please join us on the church prayer line from Wednesday on Wednesdays from 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. for the prayer hour. If there is nothing else we will continue to do, it is remain steadfast and consistent in prayer and fasting. The dial-in number and participant access code are displayed on your screens, and they're also sent out in the weekly announcements email. Uh, prayer connection. Let us remember our day of corporate church fasting, which is on Wednesdays from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Prayer and fasting is enriching and uplifting. God commands and instructs us to pray for one another and to pray together. We call our members to be in consistent and constant prayer for the body of Christ. Join us in prayer this week to pray for our special requests for the friends and members of Grant. And these include the family of Sister Meredith Gittens, who has recently transitioned, Sister Suen Pinnock, Sister Suzanne Bennett, Mother Elaine Sparks, Georgiana Stephen, Pauline Wright, Mark Jackson, Louisa Samuels, Sister Gloria Browning, Sister Lorraine Downey, Brother George Stephen and the Stephen family. 
We also pray for our shuttings, which are Patricia Providence, Daisy Perry, David King, Carol Tibu, and Mother Virginia Boyce. We pray for our church, for our church leadership, for conversion and salvation of new souls, spiritual growth and maturity, stewardship, and the finances of the church. A food bank. Our Grand Full Food Bank continues to serve our community. The operating hours for the food bank are Fridays from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. If you or someone you know is in need, please reach out to us and we will help. No one has to go hungry during these difficult times. And thus ends our weekly announcements. Okay, thank you, Sister Patience. Um, just to add that we will be, um, okay, we will be, we will send out information for those who wish to um, give condolences to the Gittins family. Um, we will send information out on the details of the funeral as soon as it is finalized. Um, we may have a short service in the sanctuary. Um, we have not finalized the date yet and the procedure and the protocols, but um, we will send out the information as soon as we finalize what will take place. Um, we do hope that we can, as we also prepare to reopen in two weeks, we are still making final preparations. I know the ushers will be doing a run through um, and uh, the signs will be put up. So we are still making preparations. Um, we know what we are to do. We know what is required. And so in hopefully by next week, beginning of next week, you will start getting um, information. We, we will be sending out a link that has a waiver. You will have to do self-screening prior to and also um, on the day. Um, so we are, we are hoping that you will um, follow the protocols. So you, we, are, we are really hoping that you will follow the protocols. You will be um, as cooperative as possible as you always are. Um, so as soon as the link is posted on the website or the link is available, we will send it out in the emails and you can also go to the website and do the registration. Okay, but you will also have to do some screening. So we trust that as we make the preparations to reopen, we trust that you remain prayerful. We trust that you um, fast and pray. We will be doing a hybrid service for those persons who will not be able to attend for whatever reason. Um, we, we don't want you to be left out. And so we are also putting that in place. But to God be the glory, all is going smooth and well. Uh, we will inform you on the details of the funeral service for Sister Meredith Gittins. Um, I will also, um, we may need um, ushers, but I'll let you know what the arrangement is. So I will be reaching out to Sister Tanya to see if we can get some ushers or even volunteers to come and to assist as we put some plans in place. Um, it will still be with the regulations, but we have not finalized the details as to how we will proceed. But thank you so much. Um, keep the family in prayer as they go through this time. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace now and forevermore. And the people of God say, amen, amen, and amen. God bless.